Hey guys, welcome back. It's your favorite game with the limp, and I am here to ask you a question. What do you do if you are one of the biggest board game companies out there and you have the rights to an IP that is so large it's almost a license to print money that you already have a couple of big games based upon that IP that are vastly popular? One of them's one of the actually, I think the biggest uh, miniatures game on the planet right now. What do you do when you have those rights? Well, you take and put them together and make yourself a little Franken game here, which is Star Wars The Outer Rim, that has little bits and pieces taken from, you know, other different uh, games that they've made from it, cobbled together into its own standalone game. That way you can get the people who are already interested in the rest of your products to take and jump on this one, which is exactly what I did. See, because I am a big X-Wing Miniatures fan, you guys have seen, I've got a few videos about X-Wing Miniatures up. Not a lot, but uh, I love playing X-Wing Miniatures. I love going to tournaments. The people who play, they're great. Uh, one of the best gaming communities out there right now. Uh, so I love anything that I can get extra for X-Wing Miniatures. And of course, one of those things are special dice. Now, these are just the regular dice that come with X-Wing Miniatures. These are not the dice that actually came with this game. Because I got this game because of the special dice that come in. It's the same dice that X-Wing Miniatures uses, the same hits, crits, focus, blanks, and all that, except that it's in a golden color instead of the generic red color that you usually have. And so many of the people that I play with were telling me they were going to buy this game just because they wanted the dice that come with it. So I gotta give it to FFG. I swear they had to know that Outer Rim was going to sell to X-Wing players. They're gonna pay 40, 50 bucks, however much it costs them to take and get this game from whatever retailer, solely for the dice. All right, and more power to them. You, they know what they have. But I figured, you know, there could be a good game here. Let's sit down, let's go over it. It is FFG, which always has some of the best components. Their cards are always good stock. The card uh, board itself is always nice and thick, has a good, nice feel to it. And this game is no different. They do not skimp when it comes to quality of their products. Now, I would have liked to have actually seen maybe miniatures instead of cardboard standees, but I think they were going for a, a cost savings measure. Uh, is for this game, they didn't want it to cost too much because I think they were really wanting the X-Wing players to buy it for the damn dice. So they wanted to get the game out as cheap as possible so us dumb X-Wing players would, you know, buy it. And I would take and show you guys the yellow dice, but they're actually packed away with my X-Wing stuff right now because I'm next time I actually get the chance to go play, uh, I will be taking that. You guys can actually see over there on my shelf a lot of my ships just stacked up, ready to go. Those aren't even the ones that are, you know, set up, ready to play. They're in my other stuff. All right, but the purpose of Outer Rim, obviously you can see it's set up like a little rim here, all the way around with a bunch of different planets and space lanes. And it's based in the Star Wars universe where you play as a smuggler or bounty hunter, and your goal is to become the most famous and or infamous uh, bounty hunter, smuggler, mercenary, whatever uh, character that you're playing as in the galaxy. To do that, you're going to be doing a number of different missions, whether it's attacking patrols or delivering cargo or going after bounties or delivering uh, luxurious goods or uh, any number of little things. They're all actually based off of these cards, which we'll get into uh, here in just a little bit. The way I'm probably going to handle this little review through is I'll probably just go over the game uh, here in this first video, just the basics of how it's going to play, and then uh, we'll take and play through a few rounds of it in the next video, just so you can see the basic gameplay itself and how you accrue uh, fame points and uh, all that type jazz money and new ships, all the, the good stuff that you're looking for. That way you can determine whether or not you think there's enough actual game here to be worth it for you. And the neat part is, since they have been you know, holding on to the Star Wars IP for a while now, I recognize all the symbols and uh, things that they talk about, you know, focus and hit and crit and the, uh, like on your ships down here, I knew that's going to be movement and attack and hull. It's similar symbols to the other stuff that they use. So uh, a lot of their games have the same premise kind of worked all the way through. But like I said, you're trying to take and get um, your fame up as much as you can. 
and you're going to pick from one of a handful of different uh, bounty hunters, and it's the usual ones that you, you would think of. Han Solo, um, Boba Fett, Lando Calrissian, IG-88, Bosk, all the big names are in this game. The one that I have chosen to play as is IG-88. I was kind of hoping they would have like A, B, C, or D in here, like uh, is an X-Wing. And each one of the bounty hunters is going to have a personal goal and some actions that they can take. And at the bottom, you can see they have some skills as well. Uh, you can see IG's special ability is once per combat, you may re-roll any number of your dice, any number of your um, uh, attack dice. Awesome. That is a cool ability to have. That's a very powerful ability in X-Wing, so I figured, shoot, yeah, I'll, I'll go with that. As an action, you can take a droid crew from another player in your space. And his personal goal is to have two droid crew to gain one fame, and then you flip the card. When you flip the card, after you've accomplished your personal goal, that's when you actually get another action. When you would become defeated, you may discard one of your crew to recover all damage from your character and ship instead. Place the crew contact token on the nearest uh, empty contact space. Uh, we'll go over contacts and crews uh, later on when we're actually playing. Uh, but that's going to be like that for each of the different bounty hunters, mercenaries, whoever. Uh, they'll all have a special ability. But it's not just that. The ships actually have that as well. Now, you won't see that in this first video because there are starting ships. There are four of these basic starting ships. The game can be one to four players. So I will be playing Solitaire. And your choice is going to be between the GA1 or G1A Starfighter, which obviously is the one I'm going to pick because I love scum, or the let's flip it around, the G9 Rigger, which is actually what the AI. If you have an AI opponent, opponent, it tells you to start with this. You see, it's a little bit faster, but has less attack and less hull. So to get around uh, the galaxy quicker but only by one space, and the loss of hull and attack seems pretty uh, significant. So I figured I'd go with this. I love the uh, the G1A. I have flown scum for, yeah, forever. So that's neat. I'm actually kind of interested to see if uh, they're going to be putting this ship into X-Wing. My guess would be yes, since most of the ships uh, in this game on the other ship sheets are in X-Wing. And actually, I think they're the same damn pictures. Actually, I could swear this picture is probably on one of their cards. So many of the uh, the artwork is stuff that they're reusing. Just to show you real quick some of the other ships that you can get. Obviously, you can get the Millennium Falcon. You can get Slave One. Uh, Boba Fett's. I forget what the hell that thing's called off the top of my head. The Light Freighter. The, um, oh, what they used to call it. Party Bus. Back in the uh, first edition of X-Wing when you would put a whole lot of the bounty hunters on it and... Uh, in the crew slots. Of course, this is the one that I'm going to try to get with IG, the aggressor class assault fighter. I'm definitely wanting to try to get this to help him out because he needs to have a, <clears throat> a couple of crew slots to fill his personal goal, but these starter ships only have one crew, so I need to take and get a different ship. I don't recognize this one. I probably have missed it from something. Heavy duty lifter. <laughs> uh, Shadow caster, of course. I mean, and you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. If you've played X-Wing, you've seen this uh, image of the shadow caster before and, and i'm not upset about that i don't mind them reusing uh art assets like that because it it almost makes me feel more connected to this game because i'm already connected to that game so i think it's a, a good business move on their part to take and mix uh components or images like this to get you more into the game right off the bat so we got the shadow caster of course we got the hawk which is a lot better here in second edition instead of first edition. I don't recognize this one, short hauler. Yeah. And then these are just extra starter ships. So they do have a bunch of ships that you can uh, get as you go through the game. You do have to buy them and upgrade into it, but it is possible. Continuing on looking at our little player board here, like I said, I'm going with IG and all of these little player board here have a uh, little slot where you stick your card to determine which character you're playing as. And I gotta say, I really like these cardboard pieces. You can see that they actually have cutouts in them for the little 
uh, fame tracker and your reputation tracker tokens can go in there and they slide very nicely. This is what I'm talking about with FFG putting out just high quality components. That has never been an issue for them. The one issue with these is I think the way they're constructed, let me see if I can zoom in close enough for you guys to see. You can see they're kind of glued together there, the piece that's on the bottom. I think that is making them bend a little bit because they are having a little bit of warping. This red one over here, actually a little bit more than uh, the other one. You guys can see it's warping just a little bit. And the other components, the ones that I actually had to punch out out of the sheets themselves, aren't having any warping issues. It just seems to be these, and I think that has to do with the way it was kind of glued together. It's not major, it's not affecting any of the tokens or uh, anything like that. I mean, place a heavy book on it if it's that big of a deal for you, but just so you know, there's a tiny bit of warping. All right, so still looking at our tracker here, which I knocked all my reputation up, that's bad. Let's put it all back to neutral. Uh, here across the top, this is basically your victory track. This is your fame. Uh, standard game, you're going to 10 points, 10 fame points. You can do a quick game at eight points or you can do a long game at 12 points. Uh, we'll probably play until someone hits like two or three points just to show you how it works. And then along the board, top and bottom, you can see that you have gear slots that you can purchase to give you upgrades or actions. And then job or bounty slots down here at the bottom. Now, this game uses a deck of cards. Let me show you over here. On the little skull, here's my damage token holder. You know, the skull of death. I thought that works pretty well for it. Uh, number deck, similar to, um, what was it? Blank it out, Fallout. Their Fallout game that had a deck that you don't shuffle. You don't shuffle that deck either. It will tell you when to draw a card from it. And we see way at the bottom of this, this is for setup for IG, you grab card 90. Well, there's actually multiple card 90s. You can tell by looking at the dots on this, there are four 90s in this deck. You just randomly draw one out and it gives you your starting mission, which is going to be a bounty. Uh, it tells you your starting planet, which is gonna be Ryloth, which is why, oh, oops. And I got Bosk sitting over here. Look at this, I grabbed the wrong damn, um, Standy, I'll, uh, I'll replace that here in a minute. But you're gonna take your little standee and you're gonna put it on whatever planet that you're starting at. So we'll take and put IG in there. I was playing a little bit off camera to kind of familiarize myself with the game and I had Bosk in there. Whoops, oh, we'll get him switched out. But it tells you your starting planet. You'll take and place him on his starting planet and then it gives you a mission or a goal or a delivery. Uh, for this, it's going to be a bounty. Elimination reward, you get 5,000 money and one fame, but if you capture him, which we'll show later on, and you deliver him to a specific planet, you're going to get twice as much money and a fame. And then after you gain a reward from this card, remove it from the game. So once you've done it, you're done. And that is his combat skill, Lobo, down there at the bottom. It shows you... Uh, who your target is. There's multiple different bounty targets. And you're going to find those, that's what these little token pieces are here. There are white, yellow, and green tokens, two associated with each of the different planets. And during your encounter phase, that's when you're gonna take and uh, have a chance to choose what type of encounter you can have. And you can choose one of these tokens, flip it over, and you know, resolve it either with this deck or by attempting to do a bounty on it. Again, you guys will see that when we start playing through the game. But my goal is going to be to find him. He's a white token. So I have to find one of these white tokens being him and then deliver him over to, what was it, Cantononi or something like that? I think that's down over here. Yeah, down over here. So edge of the board, really gotta work myself down there to him. And then one last thing over here to the side, first player starts off with 4,000 money. Second player starts off with 6,000 money. And if you're playing against an AI, which I am, um, they always are going to be the second player. So you do get to go first. We'll show you Lando Calrissian. That's the one I picked to go against because Lando and he's awesome. 
After you roll dice for any reason, you may re-roll one of your dice. Another good ability. Kind of puts him on par with me. Personal goal, deliver two illegal cargo to gain one fame and flip this card. You notice his stats are a little bit lower than mine, but he has extra abilities at the bottom of his card. He has influence, knowledge, and piloting. So that gives him a little bit of an advantage as far as skills are concerned. Uh, there are skill checks in this game. You guys will see that again later on. And for him, he got card 91, which we'll see in a sec. Plus, he gets the bonus of having a positive reputation with a faction of his choice. We haven't talked about reputation yet, but I'll show you now. Over here to the right of the player board, that's going to be your reputation. Down here at the bottom is negative, middle is neutral, and top is positive. For him, I chose to go with the Syndicate because he starts over in the hut area. So at least the stuff around him will think positively of him. But you have, um, oh crap, I'm trying to remember which faction is which. We'll show you right here. You have the Huts, the Syndicate, Imperial, and Rebel as the different uh, factions in the game. And this can go up or down just depending on uh, whatever actions you take over the course of the game. And yes, if it's in negative and you come across their patrols, that's when they get hostile to you. Okay, and the last bit dealing with Lando, we see he has cargo, it's vehicle parts. He has a destination, the ring of, what is that, Caffrine, and he gains 5,000 for taking and delivering that. And it shows his starting planet of Nal Hutta. So he's over here on Nal Hutta, and I did switch that out. I have IG in there now. The basic gist of the game is going to revolve around these cards that you see uh, sitting around the board and then, you know, that deck as well. Each one of these decks uh, up against the ring are encounter decks and they can have anything happen. It's a, your story-esque type card. So it could be a, something associated with Tatooine or um, Mon Calamari, you know, whatever area you're in. And it will give you some event. You might have to make a skill check or you might end up in combat or get a mission. Uh, you'll just have to wait and see what happens with that. The center cards here, these are what's called the market. And when you're at planets, that's when you can interact with these and either discard the top card and then reveal the one underneath it. You're always going to have the one that's on top face up or you can buy the top card. Now, those cards are going to be the bounty deck, the cargo deck, gear and mod deck, job deck, luxury deck, and ship deck. So these are all the places where you can buy missions, buy bounties, buy jobs. And when I say buy, some of them will have a cost of zero, so you don't necessarily have to pay money to get all of them. And even do stuff like uh, upgrade your ship by you know, buying a new ship. So awesome stuff there. They did include a nice, neat little player aid on a handful of cards here. It shows you what happens on your player turn. You have a planning step, and you only get to choose one of these. And moving is actually one of those, so you won't move every turn. Uh, move is an option. You can move up to your hyperspace speed, which, again, is that green number, so you can go either six spaces or five spaces. And the spaces, obviously, are these little yellow dots. They're spread across the board, and they also include planets. So it's like one, two, three, and so on. There are a few things that can stop you, like the Maelstrom or a patrol. You can gain 2,000 money. Basically, you just, eh, I'm going to take the money. I'm going to stay where I'm at and just get a little extra money. Or you can recover all the damage from yourself and your ship. If you have been defeated, so you don't take damage and get knocked out of the game. If you get knocked down, you can actually come back into the game. There are some penalties, but you can uh, take that action, and you actually have to take that action if you've been KO'd. Your action step, you can perform any or all of these, declare, uh, deliver cargo or bounties, market action, which is the cards that I was talking about, and that's going to include discarding the top card or buying the top card and resolve a patrol movement. So now we can address patrol here in just a sec. Uh, you can trade cards with other players. Now patrols, if you look at this blue card here, it shows a patrol. It has a little number three and then the green symbol here as a patrol. 
the patrols are these icons representing things like enemy ships or the Empire. In this case, it's a little Sikh fighter, and this is part of, I keep wanting to say scum, or which one's the huts? Uh, yeah, this is the huts. Green's hut, and the other, uh, yellow's a syndicate. So, this is part of the hut faction, and if I had bought that card as an example, this would move three spaces towards me. So, I go one, two, three, and move on towards whatever character it is that bought it. If you are negative in this uh, negative reputation with this faction and they move on top of you, you end up having to do combat. You can choose to do it if you're neutral or um, positive with them, but you can lose reputation. Then at the bottom, you see it does have a reward, 5,000 if you beat them, their combat strength being three. We'll uh, go over combat here later on. But on the back of the token, you see it's got a single little dot, one step. That means it's a level one patrol. You see there are more patrols here. There's going to be four tokens for each patrol all the way up to the last one, which can't be destroyed, evidently. So if one gets destroyed, two spawns into the game. If two gets destroyed, three spawns into the game. And so on all the way down to four. So with four factions and four tokens each, that's 16 ships that will patrol along the board going back and forth just depending on who activates them by interacting with the market deck and... Uh, revealing one of these <clears throat> cards that has these symbols on it causing them to move. Over here you can see again Rebel and Syndicate and then we have Hut and Imperial over there. Last thing that you're going to do is your encounter step and this is another one where you're only going to choose one. You can fight a patrol which is what we were just talking about. Also required if you have the negative reputation with patrol in your space like we were just saying. Resolve an encounter card or resolve a contact token. Now, when it comes to an encounter card, these are the cards that I was talking about here that are associated with all of the different planets all the way around. So if you're on one of these two planets, you'll draw this card, these two, this card, uh, and so on. If you are on a yellow dot, a nav point, there is a set of cards associated with that as well, deep space. So you can choose to do one of these encounters, or if you're at the planet, you can do those contact markers that I was speaking about previously you can choose to reveal one of those. They will have a number on the token itself associated with this deck. You'll draw that specific numbered card and then resolve it just depending on whatever it is. So that's actually the, the basic gist of the game. It's, it's not horribly deep or complex by any means. It's just a few actions you're gonna do on each turn and you're trying to get the most points to win. You know, uh, basic game. We'll take and play through uh, like I said, a few rounds, maybe uh, first one to three fame points or something like that, uh, just so you guys can see how the gameplay itself works. And one other little thing that they were nice enough to include, and I do appreciate this because so many games are starting to include things like this now, which is a solo deck, and it tells you how to operate the AI. AI player turn. This is what it's going to do on its planning step. This is what it's going to do on its action step. This is what it's going to do on its encounter step. And you'll do either the first thing or all or, you know, whatever uh, is listed down on the card. It's going to tell you how to play uh, for that AI character. I really like that they included that in the game. But again, I think honestly that they, they made this game for the sole purpose of uh, enticing players who are already into their other stuff and like, hey, you want a little bit more cardboard crack? You want some uh, neat colored plastic dice that other X-Wing players won't have necessarily? Well, just buy this game and you can have them. Although, like I said, so many people in my gaming group uh, bought this game for the sole purpose of getting the dice. I wouldn't be surprised if I see this game on eBay from some of those people uh, selling it opened, used, with dice exchanged for red dice. Uh, that makes me chuckle. All right. Like I said, we're going to pause it here. Quick little overview. We'll take in uh, film it in part two and just let you guys see how the gameplay itself works. It's not difficult. It is a fun little game, I think, for uh, families or kids or if you've got friends that are into Star Wars. I think that's going to be the people that are into it or anyone who's into things like Imperial Assault or X-Wing by FFG. Uh, this is probably going to be right up your alley. All right, but that's going to be it for me for this one. You guys take care. I'll catch you in the next one.